Hi, it's FS Derek again. Thought I'd take a break from uh, FSX for uh, 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 half an hour to show you another simulator. As you know, I'm sort of only interested in simulators. Um, in fact, there's a big thing about whether they're simulators or games. Um, Microsoft started calling them games, which upset a load of people. Um, I'm only interested in sort of proper simulators. I don't really care. I mean, Total War is a battle simulator. That's a, so I'm, a lot of respect for that. Um, but um, Grand Theft Auto 5 uh, was downhill in my opinion because GTA 4 was far more realistic and uh, had much more fun with it. So um, anyway, so that's the sort of the rationale behind the choice of uh, A10C Warthog, which is part of the DCS World series. It was, it, you know, so it's sold as a standalone simulator, and it's not the only. Um, aircraft in the series and in fact they're expanding it to include tanks and warships as well so it's a sort of the serious uh, what world of tanks is and uh, world of warships and world of airplanes is to fun combat this is to uh, this is uh, serious so um, I, I just want to give you like a quick run through this game because um, this simulation because um, it's I don't want you to be put off by the fact that it's complicated. It is incredibly complicated, and if you, you know, I'm not going to show you how to use all the weapons and everything because this is just like a quick, my what I think about it, um, which will just hopefully guide you as to whether or not you think um, it might be worth dipping into. Um, it's not particularly expensive, this, and when you see how complex it is, you'll see um, it's, it does represent pretty good value for money. Now, um, what you can do is it's got a lot of. Um, uh, it, if um, you get this far and then you try and get it to start and and it just minimizes itself then what I've learned is that you have to look at the um, uh, the monitor so make sure you've got the resolution correct because if you've got the, re the resolution on something that doesn't suit your monitor so I'm on a nine, 1920 by 1080 if you set it up which I think by default it uses a 1024 by 768 then it will just minimize it'll just bug out and and minimize itself so um, just to um, that's that's the first thing I'll give you the second one is um, you can go into the training um, and the training itself is pretty good um, the uh, it's got a few um, tutorials here but uh, for example the takeoff and basic handling um, is is pretty good and it, it asks you to do a climb and a descent and then a level turn and um, this thing is so sensitive to fly I've never actually ever got through the level turn uh, basic handling so um, but these are there if you want them and you will need them if you're going to take it at all seriously but we're not going to take it that seriously at the moment I'm just going to show you how to get it started have a bit of fun and a few of the essential keys now it may, may uh, you'll see uh, you know what are we going to do we're going to jump into instant action are we going to create a fast mission uh, training mission you know jump into the campaign no what we're going to go straight into mission editor and in fact that's this is how I play this game most of the time uh, because the time required to invest in learning the whole thing is is just immense I mean to give you an idea the manual is over 600 pages long um, now if you like this game and you you know you can just follow what I'm doing just to try it out if you like it then obviously you can get into it and um, learn it in more detail but we're not going to blow anything up but what I'm going to just going to do I'm just going to click on this create new mission button at the top here so we'll, we'll create a new mission and then here it's uh, red obviously is the enemy and then the blue is all the um, uh, allied forces and then uh, insurgents at the moment are neutral so you don't need to change any of that because we're going to just set up a very let's click on OK I'm going to set up a very basic flight so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on add or modify an airplane group and it comes up with an airplane group and we'll click on uh, Batumi uh, because that's just um, that's one of the air, that's the front one of the friendly airfields and uh, if I go through here we've got the country USA now you don't have to change any of this but um, you can do if you um, want to um, this close air support um, in fact I'm going to put ground attack um, now the thing that um, frustrated me when I started this and it was uh, it took me a long time to learn what I was doing wrong 
is this uh, skill level. You have to put player in here. Um, in other words, you have to put something in that's yellow because if you, like for example, if you put um, reconnaissance, then it puts you in an F14A, which is great. But this isn't an F14A, so we don't want to be in an F14A. We want to be in an A10C, and you can see that A10C is not listed. So first of all, you have to task it correctly, and uh, ground attack is about as good as you as you're going to want. Then um, you select the one in yellow again, the A10C, and then you click the player, not the skill, not the client, not the random, but player. Okay. And then what I would do is that at that point I would save it because um, let's just save that. Now it doesn't. Uh, they're going to be saved in your uh, my missions folder so we'll give this a name and we'll just call this uh, FS Derek 1 Miz for mission and click OK so there we are so we've got one plane on the ground there now I'm going to press the on the keypad uh, let's have a look and see what zooms in something should be zooming in shouldn't it no OK we'll have to leave it where it is then but we'll just reselect it again and uh, just as I say check that you've always got player in there now um, you'll click on the payload because it's always nice to take off with something um, some bombs on or something not that we're going to use them I'm going to reduce the fuel slightly because uh, we put a lot of weight on now we've put the bombs on and I'm going to make it um, unit one of four so again it's much better to this now it's taken us it's made this unit four of four so um, we're gonna have to just backtrack and check everything has got bombs on it yep and if we go back to the uh, route planning mode the first type of um, waypoint we're going to want will be take off from the runway now uh, what I'm gonna do just gonna fly around in a big circle so uh, what we'll do is we'll put another I think we can put another waypoint on uh, hang on, let's reselect the. That's it, and we'll go to waypoint. Add a waypoint. Here we are. So we'll add a waypoint over the sea, and then we'll add a waypoint over this other airport. Now, when you're adding waypoints, actually, I've just moved the mouse, scrolled the mouse wheel forwards, and that's zoomed in a bit. So that's going to help, isn't it? So when you're um, um, adding waypoints, it's always best to do them over some sort of. Um, feature so here we're going to put another waypoint over this river and then we'll follow the river down the valley pretty much to waypoint four and then if we let's go out to uh, waypoint five and then waypoint six will be at the beginning of the ILS now if we if we zoom in there this zooms a little bit um, slow but you'll see 110.3 um, which is the uh, ILS frequency and in fact you can actually if I just so I put in waypoint 7 now, I'll just delete that so if I click to edit I can now um, click and drag any of these so if I want to let's just make that um, on the sort of confluence of those rivers and then we'll make that pretty much parallel with the um, ILS now this waypoint six, we're going to be going into the ILS, so it needs to be at an altitude of about um, 2,500 feet, and we can step back through the waypoints and put, say, for example, make them the other ones 5,000 feet, and step back and make that one say 10,000 feet. I'll show you why I'm doing this later because um, we're going to follow these waypoints, and that that will do because I mean we're not going to be worried about. Um, I'll put 2,500 in for that. You, know, you're not, you don't have to stick to these altitudes. So, what have we got? We've got a group, a USA group, Group D, tasked with ground attack. I am playing one of four. There are A10Cs. My skill is player. Um, the um, comms and everything um, we're going to leave for the time being. Call sign and everything, just accept what they say. Um, and uh, we're going to fly around in a big right hand circle so we'll save that and that's now saved 
Now, what you can do is you can um, go down to the left here and exit the mission editor and then go back to the main menu and then go into fly a mission and then find the mission and fly it. But in fact, they've made it a bit simpler than that because they realize, um, actually, if you right click and drag, you can um, move the map. And um, if you do decide to set up your own missions like that, and I do recommend that you do do it this way because, um, for example, supposing you want to blow up a truck, there's nothing more fun than actually putting your own truck in and telling it where to drive and then finding it and blowing it up. Um, if you want to um, uh, do the mission editor or use the mission editor a lot, then you'll, you'll get quite good at doing this. So, and all it puts in by default a turning point, so that over the top of that airfield is a turning point. But I was just going to show you a quick way to get straight into the flight because basically you want to, if you're setting up, you know, if you're creating missions, what you want to do is create a mission, fly it straight away, see if it works. If it doesn't, come back, tweak it, go back, fly it straight away, come back to here. So you, there's a shortcut to the um, flight, and you just do flight, fly mission. And here we are, we're uh, straight, straight away into the. Uh, loading screen um, in the old 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 days of course this used to take ages um, well not this game because this game is fairly recent um, I'm going to hopefully I'm going to show you another one of the DCS series uh, the helicopter simulation DCS black shark now we're going to press pause break now if everything goes well we should be on the runway and we are which is excellent now it pulls back a little bit automatically, that's nothing to do with me. But if I press F2 and look around, you'll see that I've got, I've actually got, let me just turn, I'll just turn that down a little bit, I've got four wingmen. Now, one of the problems, I'm going to put the one stage of flap down. You'll see there, I think, have I got one stage down or two? I've just put another one down, so I've got two down. I've got one down now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throttle up and take off pretty quickly. And the reason is that uh, number two is very impatient and he will he will take off. Um, what, what you've got to do, I've got the left hand side of the runway here, he's got the right hand side of the runway, so we just have to keep it straight. Pull the um, weight off the nose wheel a bit, just a little bit, and then when you feel it starting to come up, don't take off too fast, just and try and try and stay away from the right hand side of the runway press G to put the gear up press shift F to raise the flaps now I've encroached into his airspace 7 I really there and then you can start to uh, climb I'll zoom in a little bit because it'll make you a bit easier to see what we're looking at there so I'll, um, I'll start climbing and just turn right and I'm going to throttle back a bit because you do not fly this plane at full throttle all the time so here we've got an airspeed of 222 knots, we've got an altitude of around about 900 feet, and we're turning right. Now this little um, this hat here, thing here is your uh, flight vector, and it basically tells you where your plane is flying to. So it's where, you, where your plane is going to end up if um, you carry on flying the way you're flying. And this will come in... This will come in... Um, much more when we come into land because obviously as you land you want to have that over the um, over the runway so there we are if I go to press F2 and just go to the outside again first you'll see that the graphics themselves are pretty stunning and this is by no means um, a high-end uh, graphics car there's the there's the, the three wingmen you can see all uh, outlined in blue or rather with blue um. now this uh, box here is the waypoint so what I need to do is steer that um, thing until it's over the box. Now I'm just going to check that because, um, yeah, yeah, I think that's right. And remember, I'm not. If you want to know how to fly this very precisely, then there are plenty of videos on YouTube that show you how to do that. But. Um, one thing you can do to check that you are flying towards the waypoint is have a look down here because down here in um, nautical miles is the distance to the next waypoint and in fact it doesn't look like it's going down at all does it? it looks like it's going up 
So, possibly we've missed a waypoint. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn around. Now, um, if you've flown uh, jets at all, uh, military jets, you'll be very familiar with this ladder, where the one with no nothing on it is um, uh, zero degrees pitch, and then this is five degrees pitch up, and this is five degrees pitch down. And you can see on about three quarters throttle, I'm getting about 270 knots out of this, which is, you know, this is quite respectable. So, if we're going to um, fly anywhere, we might as well fly to where we plan to. My poor wingmen will be getting well confused. What I'd like to do is zoom out on this map, but in fact I don't know how to do that. And again, I make no apologies for that, it's just that um, there, there are, for every key on the keyboard, there are up to six different actions. Um, one of them, for example, is you can toggle the formations, and that's left Windows T. So, I'm just having a look because this um, flight plan lines come up here. So, if I press F5 and have and have a look at my nearest wingman. He's about um, 1.3 nautical miles away, if you can't read that, he's about 1.3, 1.4 nautical miles away. And in fact now I've uh, pressed F1 to get back in the cockpit. He's going to um, be much, um, much further away from me, he'll be about 4 or 5 nautical miles away. There's, <laughs> there's one thing you do need to do with your wingmen if you're going to uh, make up your own simulations and that is um, you have to get rid of them before you land because they are a right royal pain if you land and, and you leave them in the air you can see them all here on the on the moving map they're um, actually to the uh, to about uh, 10 o'clock relative to me and uh, They all follow you around, you know, they're very good. And obviously when you get to um, uh, missions and battles and things like that, then um, you'll you'll want them because you'll task them to, um, you'll task them to attack uh, ground forces. Um, the A-10 is, is pretty much a tank buster. It's not uh, designed for air-to-air -air combat. I dare say they've got a few air-to-air -air missions, but uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend them. I can't see on this map the um, waypoint lines at all, so I know I'm doing something horrendously wrong and everyone's shouting at the screen and everything, but um, I know pretty much where we are because um, we were heading for this airfield, weren't we? So and that was, I think, uh, waypoint two or something. So let's, uh, because um, I'm giving you just a sense of how to fly this, um, let's now go right and show you a bit of the scenery. The scenery is fantastic. It's it's pretty much because it's a small area they've uh, really put a lot of effort into making it nice and there are a lot of neat effects. So for example you can see the wind. I don't know if you saw that chimney down there but um, you can see the smoke is blowing from right to left. So um, there we are you can see down there um, from right to left. So when we come into land we, we um, if we're going to come to land from the sea, which we are, which we shouldn't be, because obviously we'll be um, landing a different way to the way we took off, um, we can expect a right crosswind. So I'm going to um, climb up a bit now just to show you what the clouds look like. And obviously once, when you do this, you're very reliant on your um, heads up display. There's all sorts of interesting um, artifacts on this. Um, I don't know whether you'll be able to notice it. Let me just um, find the right key. I've got three A4 sheets of. Um, whoops, let's not uh, pile into the ground. Um, actually, this is a good point to show you the autopilot. Autopilots actually on jets like this, you'd think they'd be really brilliant, wouldn't you? 
you think they'd be capable of flying the mission, blowing everything up and then getting you back to base even if you were dead but in fact they're not, they're rubbish um, so for example if I press um, 3 and then A nothing happens let's try that again there we are, 2A and you can see there's a path hold has come up here, PATH, HLD um, if I press 3 no it's not going to do it ok well it's going to hold the path but not the altitude I only hope I'm uh, clear of the mountains let's turn right again and Warning, uh, autopilot. what I've done is I had the autopilot on and I've actually uh, grabbed a seize control of the plane so it's just told me it's warned me that uh, I've taken over from the autopilot So again, the you know clouds are pretty pretty good in this, and this is only about fifteen dollars. This game it's about I don't know fifteen pounds, I suppose. You can get it on Steam. Um, the the one that really got me onto the um, sort of these very very high fidelity simulations was DCS, which then became DCS Two Black Shark, and uh, which um, basically um, you know further improved the. Um, accuracy of that simulation and that that's a load of fun um, and I did spend a lot of time and really did get used to um, flying that and and learn the startup sequence and the shutdown sequence as well um, for those of you who are sort of not a great fans of checklists you can this thing will start itself up so for example you can start on the apron and press a special uh, key I think it's Windows Home or something and and all the buttons will start to click and it will turn itself on now there is a problem with that in that it's not totally reliable um, for example um, last time I tried it it turned everything on except the engines and said now the plane's ready to fly and I don't know why I don't know whether it's because I switched to external view and so it missed out clicking a few buttons or something but it's it's a bit like a computer program that's got all these buttons to click and it does them all in order which is not a bad idea except that um, if uh, it says it doesn't say turn something on it basically it says reverse the position of this button so and it's assuming that they're all off so for so you have to really start with everything turned off beforehand if you don't then for example if something is turned on beforehand then the startup procedure will turn it off I know it sounds a bit complicated that's why you, you shouldn't really rely on that um, what you can do is what I did which is just either dive into missions which are where your plane is on the runway in which case it will be completely perfectly set up for um, whatever you're trying to do I'm just going to throttle back a bit so we don't want to come steaming in too hard um, or just um, set yourself up with simulations there we are, I found the waypoint line there now set yourself up with simulations where you put yourself on the runway you know um, you can choose uh, when you start a simulation to be either cold and dark on the open or or fully powered up on the runway mm. and it just depends on you know this, that's the great thing this is this is a massive great uh, A10C sandbox now if you've got friends no I don't have any friends but if you have got friends then you can play this multiplayer and there's some great uh, videos on YouTube showing people um, on collaborative missions I think I found a waypoint there, that's good isn't it, yeah I think that's a waypoint, is it? No, it's not It's taking me to the waypoint it thinks I should be going to and not the waypoint which I'm aiming for, which is the, the river waypoint So I'm just going to fly, I'm just going to fly this manually really now It's a shame because I think I made the circuit too big and um, the, the uh, I took it off the map If I'd left it on the map then I would have been okay because I would have been able to have seen it and that would have got me started off flying it and um, it would everything would have worked from that point onwards so that's where we're landing and we're going to come in from the sea which I know isn't the same way as we um, took off which is um, which is a bit naughty but that's just the way I planned it now one thing I can read is the wind here I've got a wind of 157 at 17 and 157 is is coming in here so in fact um, landing um, landing from the sea onto the land actually is probably pretty smart apart from the fact that we're going to have a 
we're going to have a 17 knot wind pretty well on the nose to the right to the right of the nose now it's got all the standard instruments and everything and uh, you, uh, you know you've got all the, the standard stuff to watch you've got lots and lots of uh, engine dials you've got a fantastic amount of um, gadgetry there to muck about with and even more gadgetry down there um, pretty well as far as I can tell all these switches work so um, you're going to have some gr a great time my, my throttle's not working because I'll show you if I show you I don't know put the master arm on and the gun arm on there we go and that's the um, gun armed so what I suggest you do is and what I've done is I've sort of got you in the air haven't I I've just got you got you flying the thing so um, providing you don't run out of fuel you can just stooge around like this all the time and just literally if you like read the manual at the same time as you're flying around and just uh, muck about you know just push push and pull stuff and you know providing you don't pull the um, engine fire what's it um, you'll, you'll probably be alright now here's the waypoint I'm heading for and here's my uh, velocity uh, indicator so I'm going to keep the the round uh, circle over the square thing and that will tell me that I'm heading now I'm going 300 knots which I don't mind because I d I'm going to head out pretty quickly to uh, uh, and then turn around the um, ILS was 110 decimal 3 wasn't it so if, see if I can work out which I'm not, I'm not, it's 110 decimal I don't think it is that oh I don't know it might be picked up something haven't I oops I'm going to pick up uh, pick up a bit of seawater soon if I don't pull out of the dive now it's tremendously forgiving in terms of um, uh, speed you, you know it's very difficult to overspeed this plane and if you do if you do fly it aggressively all I would ask is that you do fly it properly because you do see people trying to fly missions in this and they're coming on dive bombing runs and they don't realize even for example that this plane has got air brakes uh, actually I can use the air brakes because um, i just wait until I straighten up a bit just to make sure I get my cronies out of the way now I'm reckon right pigs here at this because I should have um, I um, was flying for the uh, initial approach fix and I'm on the on the uh, ILS as it is well I'll just throttle up a bit and shift F2 to the outside view if I press control B you'll see that you've got some pretty uh, fearsome brakes on this I'll press sorry that was control B I'll press shift B to close them down again F1 to get back in the cockpit so if you're coming in we need to be landing about 120 knots I'm doing about 190 at the moment and I'm obviously high so I'm just going to cut the throttle and I've got the nose the, the uh, wind is on the nose to the right so and I'm just slightly right of center line so it's going to take me across so it's all looking pretty good now the, the when I say it's looking pretty good it's actually looking pretty bad to have beeping noises in the plane but um, that uh, velocity vector is well over to the left isn't it it really should be on the end of the runway so what I'm going to do is just bank over to the right a bit and try and get it on the end of the runway and I think we're probably gonna have to crab in because of the crosswind now I'll show you a useful trick oh now that's another thing do you remember what I said about getting rid of the wingmen they're gonna go absolutely mad if I land so I'm going to say dispatch wingmen to complete the mission and return to base and that's Windows E. Two, copy. Four, roger. Three, copy. Now you don't want to know what happens if you don't do that. You just they just keep shouting about rejoin and wheels up and rejoin and wheels up. 
I'm doing 180, which is still far too fast. So can, I'm going to. You have to press and hold down Control B, and you might just be able to hear the air brakes there. And I want to get it down to about 140. Then I'll shut the wheel, the um, air brakes with Shift B. Press and hold down Shift B. Now I'm assuming that beeping noise is a ground proximity warning. I'm going to shift B to shut the air brakes. I'm going to press F to put my first stage of flaps down. And G to put the gear down. I'm still too high. This thing is telling me I'm a little bit too high. I'm pretty well, I'm high or, or on target. Still got no throttle on and you can start to see the um, you start to see the crosswind there can't you so I'm actually pretending the runway's to the right and I'm aiming to land on the right F for more flaps and now using the throttle to control myself at 120 knots pretty well and when you land you can put the air brakes out this is control B to open the air brakes and then press and hold W And obviously you're just going to make sure you're straight. So it bounced a bit, didn't it? So control B gets the air brakes open and then press and hold W. And if I shift to the um, external view, you'll see the flaps down and the air brakes extended. So I'm going to press shift F a couple of times and get those flaps up. Everything on this plane is pretty quick. Uh, being a military aircraft, I think you'll find that everything works much more um, quickly. Last but not least, we press insert and that turns on the um, nose wheel steering. So, that's, um, that's just a quick sort of... Um, oh, let's press F5, I can't press F5. I, I was pressing F5 to try and look where the wingmen were, but in fact uh, I've dispatched them, so I don't have any wingmen anymore. <laughs> um, if you try and land um, without telling them to um, make their own arrangements, then they try to maintain formation around you all the time you're um, coming in on the glide slope, and uh, it's really quite messy. So a little bit more W for wheel brakes and it's got a nice uh, a runoff. So let's press W just to um, stop and then I think Windows End is the um, shutdown button. Uh, so there it is, it's turning itself off. Uh, I'll just shut the um, air brakes. So I, I hope you've um, sort of uh, enjoyed that and picked up a bit about what it's all about. It's a massive, massive high fidelity simulation. This it really I can't recommend it highly enough. It really is excellent, and we haven't touched any of it. We haven't really touched any of it. Uh, you know, none of not of the the missiles, the the guns, the um, uh, Maverick laser guided missiles. It's got uh, old fashioned iron bombs and stuff on it. There's no end of um, uh, configurations you can have it in. So um, if you've got the odd, uh, you know, if you've got a few quid and um, you fancy just flying something that's really, really such a massive uh, uh, amount of fun, you can see the in, inside here. I don't have a high-end graphics card really by any means, but um, you've got all the shadows and everything are all on, and the um, um, you know the frame rate is um, is you know it's not it's it's. You, you can't uh, it's not flickering like the old in the old days when you used to have to put up with eight frames a minute on final approach <laughs> eight, eight frames a second or anything so anyway it's good give it a go if you want to know anything more about this particular plane i'll be happy to um show you i mean i'm i'm certainly not an expert and i'm not going to um do videos on this plane showing you how to use it to bomb stuff because far better um people than me can do that but just uh, as uh, as a simulator, I just wanted to see what is is probably um, at one of one of the most outstandingly 
uh, brilliant simulators that um, is available on the market at the moment.